Thank you so much, Xander. I want to double click a little bit on the stories around how we got to where we are today. In this talk, I'm going to take you on a journey to share the story of commerce and cryptography that has led me to view our present moment not as a discordant phenomenon, but as an echo of a larger theme. History does not repeat itself, but it does rhyme. Everyone remembers the Renaissance as beautiful art, but what caused it? What changed in our society? Literally, the entire world. I want to talk about three themes today that I think presage the Renaissance. You can look at it from a lot of different angles, but I'd like to talk about crisis, innovation, and commerce. Foucault said that the opposite of festival is plague. The dance with death unites us all. In the Renaissance, it was the Black Plague. Today, it is coronavirus. The fact that our existence is temporary and highly malleable is laid bare by affliction. The plague caused us to harmonize on discord. Specifically, the present moment, just like the time after the plague, is one where truth has become scarce. We live in a Byzantine age. A major theme of the plague was the inability for people around the world to discern fact from fiction. What is real? What is false? The global society has become hungry for new philosophies, new ideas, and new technology. Innovation. This is a sketch by Leonardo da Vinci. Now is the time of innovation. In the Renaissance, all manner of innovation, new ships or vessels were contrived. A million different systems were amalgamated from thin air. Try once, try a thousand times again. Today, innovation is all around us, everywhere from silicon chips to vibrating the very air we breathe to communicate unimaginable amounts of data. In the Renaissance, eventually the struggle led to the invention of the steam engine, and with it, the beginnings of the Industrial Revolution. But we are getting ahead of ourselves. Back to the Renaissance. Due to the Black Death, the Renaissance became a time where new ideas found shelter, new philosophies, new cultures. Society began to contort itself into new apparitions. The zeitgeist was trade, and its crucible was the ledger. The invention of double-entry accounting created a system of debits and credits. Credit, in particular, is an index of humanity's ability to dream. And dream we did. Commerce. Society began to dream and build. Commerce flourished throughout the world as the age of enlightenment began to dawn. The word renaissance actually means rebirth, and it was a time of coming out from the darkness into the light. One often overlooked facet of the Renaissance is the development of cryptography at the heart of trade. This passage from Atlas Obscura frames the importance well. In 1516, in the locked back rooms of the Venetian governor's palace, the city's first professional crypt analyst, Giovanni Soro, was hard at work trying to decipher an intercepted letter. Venice and its allies were winning the War of the League of Cambrai, just one among the drawn-out Italian wars that embroiled almost all European monarchs. The Venetians were unsure of the status of their rivals. The encrypted letter had been sent on April 3rd from the enemy captain Marco Antonio Colonna to an ally, the German Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian. In the letter, he begged Maximilian for financial assistance. Quote, if the money is not sent within eight days, the Swiss soldiers will leave. Soros struggled to uncover the contents for several days, and on April 8th, he cracked the code. Within the year, Venice would be victorious. It seems obvious that cryptography has been at the core of our secrets since time immemorial. We know that society valued these cryptanalysts based on their compensation. A master builder, seven gold ducats a month. A crypt analyst, 10. Indeed, the ability to arbitrage markets across geographies based on information asymmetry formed the nexus of trade. 
commerce and opportunity flourished because of these financial instruments, the combination of the ledger with the ability to keep secrets. So is that the phenomenon we're seeing today? Many of you know that this is the sentence that is embedded in the first block of Satoshi Nakamoto's Bitcoin. In 2008, Satoshi gifted the world a new philosophy. Satoshi designed a system for digital permanence, a technological Akashic record. The concept of a blockchain is the same level of breakthrough as double entry accounting. Combining double entry with new, with new cryptography in the Renaissance created a world where society developed at a pace never seen before. Combining the blockchain with new cryptography is having the same effect in the modern age. Today, commerce happens not at the speed of merchant ships, but at the pace of the internet. Communication moves at the speed of light, and so too must merchants. Everything from inventory tracking to financial alchemy has begun to transition to this new medium of trust. It wasn't always like this. What phenomenological advancement led to this? Is this even the second time that this is happening? Historical context. My pet theory is that every major accounting innovation is actually presaged by two things. A new information propagation mechanism enabled by a cryptographic innovation. The accounting innovation of recording data on stone tablets was the first form of encoding of information. Lloyd Fournier, a security consultant, describes the context of this tablet thus. Over 5,000 years ago, the ancient Mesopotamians started to record quantities on clay tablets. They partitioned the tablet into rows and columns. Within each cell, they drew a picture of the type of item and made holes indicating the quantity of it. Each type of item had its own pictographic representation, making this ledger language arguably the earliest form of human writing we've discovered. In other words, the ancients invented Excel before Word. <laughs> Encoding information, this primitive predecessor of cryptography, enabled the first storage of knowledge. These recordings of information coincided with the dawn of civilization as we know it. Simply writing information down was enough encryption for nearly 5,000 years as the set of humans capable of understanding recorded information remained quite small. Knowledge proliferation globally made a million-fold increase when Gutenberg invented the printing press in 1440. The ability to radically proliferate mimetic systems at a pace never seen before birthed a new era of literacy in the world. Now virtually anyone on earth could have access to books and the opportunity to read. No longer was the written word restricted to just the rich and powerful. In order to protect the information asymmetry at the heart of global trade, the Medicis and other power brokers of the Renaissance began to use cryptography the substitution of symbols to protect their accounting and their messages. With the power of encryption and accounting, the Medicis became one of the richest families on Earth during the Renaissance. Claude Shannon helped transform the design of digital circuits from an art to a science with his master's thesis applying Boolean algebra to the analysis and synthesis of digital circuits. But what really changed the world was his masterpiece, A Mathematical Theory of Communication. In this work, Shannon described the way we all communicate in a simple, understandable axiom. Transmitters encode information, known as a signal, which is corrupted by noise and decoded by a receiver. In this paper, he introduced a concept we are all familiar with, the bit, which is the smallest unit of information, zero or one. With the birth of information theory, modern computing, which was a way of encoding information that only individuals who had the knowledge of how computers operated could read, just like the protections of cuneiform on stone tablets and the written word in books so many millennia ago. This new encoding created a million-fold increase in information propagation, just like the printing press. Encoding data as bits enabled computers, and with it a scale of human commerce never before imaginable in our society, but only by introducing the element of privacy forgotten a millennia ago. In the 70s, now the computers were much more commonplace. Protecting information with a machine wasn't good enough. 
In 1977, Whitfield Diffie and Martin Hellman changed the way humans communicate with their seminal paper, New Directions in Cryptography, which laid bare a new technique that would allow anyone to communicate information over an open channel without prearrangement, but keep their information safe from any eavesdropper. This is the fundamental shift that presaged the advent of the World Wide Web, again a million-fold increase in information propagation by turning transmitted information into encrypted bits. Digital symbols that represented information, just like the cryptanalysts of the Renaissance. Prior to this, there was no real way to keep information safe over the internet. You had to send your credit card broken up in multiple different emails if you wanted to transact with somebody who wanted to sell you a book online. With this, you now could transmit a credit card over an open wire without anybody being able to read this. With this, accounting could now be performed remotely over the web of copper and glass that underpins our lives. Public key cryptography enabled the ascent of e-commerce. Again, an opportunity that had never existed before that was dramatically larger than the Renaissance and all commerce that came before it. The math that Diffie and Hellman invented protected secrets for decades, but as computers increased in computational firepower, eventually the algorithms too needed to evolve. Strong cryptography is math which can protect secrets using Diffie-Hellman style encryption against adversaries with unbounded computing power. If you took every non-quantum computer on Earth and pointed it at a single key that was selected well, you could burn those computing cycles until the heat death of the universe and never guess the private key correctly. This innovation is at the heart of the blockchain accounting revolution. All of this cryptography has become fast and cheap. We are living in a halcyon age where we can encrypt anything with almost zero cost. This is the frontier of human knowledge. When combined with new innovations in cryptography, allowing us to prove large swaths of information are correct without having access to the information itself, we will witness another one million fold increase in information propagation and with it, the birth of a new digital economy. All of this information propagation and commerce has coincided with the advent of communication networks. I love this picture from the 1890s. This is a telephony tower in Stockholm. All of those wires are actually phone lines connected to houses. But this is a metaphor for wireless networks. We now have the ability to communicate anything we want on the planet anywhere in seconds using this. So what would happen if we took the last 5,000 years of human ingenuity around information theory and commerce and put it in the palm of your hand. Who's going to take advantage of this? MobileCoin has built a mobile-first, end-to-end encrypted global payment network that has real-time settlement in five seconds or less. This will become the backbone of our new economy. We can put the last five millennia of commercial innovation into the palm of your hand. We want you to experience the fastest, most secure payment network that has ever been invented. MobileCoin is available today in over 200 million devices, including the one you have in your pocket. This makes it one of the most distributed payment networks available right now. We want to put MobileCoin into every device on Earth to enable human-scale instantaneous global commerce. We hope to equip you for the days ahead in the next few hours of passage upon our stage. We invite you to participate in the new economy, one wrought in the fires of history and the mortar of philosophy. Over the last 5,000 years, we've gone from Excel on stone tablets to strong cryptography-enabled blockchains. The whole world is escalating into an ever-increasing velocity of commerce, revolution, and innovation. We want to help you contextualize our shared reality. We want you to ask today at this conference and every day in the future, how do I participate in the new economy? Thank you. <laughs>